Hey everybody, welcome to, back to Faraday Research and I've been doing a lot of work on this project and I was up to about 2 in the morning last night. So what I've done is I've more or less uh, fastened everything down to the board and I've made a new coil. Uh, I'll talk about that here in a second. Uh, I put some terminal block, a couple of screws here for my power connections coming in for my power supply. Um, I put the capacitors in, I fastened everything down. I'm going to talk about this coil too. And I also installed those really large, super powerful, uh, 15 KVA capacitors. So I got those in line. I got three of them and it's set up in series. And then from there it goes and hits another neon light. And then from there it goes through this large coil. So this coil is solid copper wire, 18 gauge. I got uh, a tube, I guess it's from some kind of paper roll or something like that. It's about one in, about an inch and a half uh, diameter. And I got 40 turns going in one direction only. Now in the Don Smith generator, the way he had his, he didn't have this, this coil here. This is for a reason why I did this. I'll tell you in a second. This coil here, I calling it my transfer coil. This is where you're gonna wrap a winding around it, send it to a full weight bridge rectifier and start charging capacitors. So I got a capacitor bank with one LED on it. Uh, right now it's showing 1.827 volts on the capacitor bank, all right? And I'm actually gonna demonstrate actually charging a capacitor bank. So all I did was took, you know, these alligator clip wires. I wrapped it twice around. So I'm figuring that this thing's putting out for every winding, according to the power, approximately about 200 volts per winding. So if I wrap on, say, one wrap or two wraps on it, I should have enough power to go through that bridge rectifier, change it into a DC pulse and from the DC start to charge capacitors. So in this experiment, you'll see that I succeeded on doing that. So the reason why I kept this coil here, it seems to give me some back end power. Um, it's jumping the voltage up high, but it's not even that. I think it has to do with the resonant frequency that I'm producing with this coil. It's 22 gauge wire. It's probably about 600 turns. All right. I'm finding, finding out more that this coil is helping me out. I tried doing it with other gauge wire, this and that. I tried different combinations. This one, for some damn reason, seems to work. And I think it has to do the fact that I got about 600 windings and it's 22 gauge. So I'm able to get the frequency really up there and really up in high frequency and a high resonance, and because of that, I'm able to create that field energy around the device. So now, instead of connecting directly off this, which I could have, and it would have worked, I decided to put it to another coil, which I'm calling my energy transfer coil. Now, I don't know if you noticed this, but what I've essentially have done is created an isolation transformer. There is no physical connection other than the one wire coming in from the spark gap, okay? If this was a solid connection and then it went into this coil, I would load this coil up and my amp meter would go into a, a heavy load. It would start drawing a lot of current. From what I've learned from Gerald Morin, he has discovered that the spark gap eliminates the load, this is very, very, very important. If you can eliminate the load on a device, you've basically, have, well, you're, especially with a pulse motor, you've now basically eliminated the effects of lens law. The second you put a load on, on a pulse motor, and I've been working with them for quite a while, the second you put a load on the on the pulse motor generator if you don't have a spark gap you're going to start drawing a lot of amps from your source that's going to kill your motor 
And that's why I always kept that little um, um, relay um, uh, spark uh, switch that you can buy at this at uh, you know Canadian Tire or Auto Mart or whatever. It's an automotive relay switch. I don't have it with me right now, but when that switch opens and closes at the speed it's going, it's releasing a spark. And when it's doing that, that's why I'm able to run my pulse motor at 130 milliamps. If I didn't use that and I used a regular transistor or any other method without a spark, you can guarantee I'm going to be pulling over three to 400 milliamps out of that pulse motor. Very, very important discovery. And I can thank Joseph, uh, Gerald Morton for that one. So in my circuit, I have two. So the first spark gap is for the L1 coil. That's the, this red wire here. Four or five windings, good enough. That's the first spark gap. Then the wire coming off the 600 leads goes in here, goes through the neon bulb and into the second spark gap. All right. So I got the high voltage, high frequency coming off this coil, okay? I don't want to pull a lot of load off it. Otherwise, it just kills the system. So what do I do? Put it through a second spark gap. Now I've killed the lens effect is gone, okay? There's no load anymore because, like, it only takes about, if I'm really cranking it up on this, uh, on this uh, um, high voltage module, the most of my crank outs may be 350, 400, maybe a half an amp, but I'm cranking out 9,000, you know, nine, six to 9,000 volts. That's a lot different than working with say like 12 volts. If you're working with 12 volts and you're pulling a half an amp off your, off your prime mover, <laughs> you're definitely on the wrong track because you're gonna kill that battery out in no time. You know, I'm cranking out six to 9,000 volts and I'm only pulling 350 milliamps. That's nothing. That's nothing. Absolutely nothing. So, goes through the second spark up. Then I put it through these 15 kVA. Uh, these are 20,000 picofarads. These are really large. And I'll tell you right now, they will kill you. So, if you hook them up wrong, I got them hooked up in series. Okay. And when this thing is running, you do not want to touch those damn things because they will throw a spark about an inch long. So this is danger, danger, you know, be careful. All right, guys, trust me. I know <laughs> I fried myself a couple weeks ago. It wasn't pretty, but I, I did it the safe way. I did, used one hand rule and I knew I was going to get shocked. So I knew how to react to uh, protect myself, but I, under no circumstances do you take that chance, all right? This is high, high voltage. This is stuff that you would see on a power line, all right? So let's carry on. So it comes off the spark gap, goes through the three um, 15 kVA, 20,000 picofarad uh, ceramic um, uh, um, capacitors, comes through there, goes through one more neon. Now I'm finding also the neon is also like a spark gap switch as well. So it's also enhancing that frequency. I'm gonna have to do some frequency tests on this thing to see what's going on. And then from there it goes to the 40 turn, 18 gauge solid copper wire. So from there, now I wrap the two windings around the coil. I'm calling this my voltage transfer coil. Now I can tap off this as many times as I want and charge as many things as I want. Even though that I'm tapping off it, I'm not pulling a load off it. When I start charging this little uh, bank of capacitors, I'm not drawing any extra power. There's no lens, there's no, um, because it's isolated. They're not physically connected. When you have a coil connected directly to the load, like wire to wire, that's what kills your dipole or your power source. But because I am basically taking the electromagnetic induction that's coming off this coil, it, it that's what this wire is picking up. It's picking up that frequency and sending it directly into my 
full wave bridge rectifier, which has a lot of wires on it right now. All right, so, and then I patch off the wires. The two middle ones are the actual voltage that's coming off the coil. And the ones on the ends are positive, negative, DC voltage. So I'm making it a direct current. All right, enough of talking. I'm going to show you. So right now, um, I'm just going to try to set this thing up. Bear with me for a second here. I'm trying to set this meter so you can see it. Okay. Ah, there we go. Okay, so right now it's about 1.686 in diving because it's got a load on it, small LED, which is not lit. It needs about 3 volts. So I'm going to turn on the system, and we are going to see this work. I'm going to put it on, um, I'm going to start at 7,000 volts, okay? And as you can see, it is now charging. Look how fast it's going. She's climbing. Look at it go. The light's not on yet. It has to go to about 3 volts. And then it should start turning blue. So we're charging her up pretty good here. Uh, milliamps wise, okay, I'm running at 400 milliamps. Four, yeah, 450 milliamps. But I'm putting out 7,000 volts. So in wattage wise, uh, you know, that's a lot of watts I'm putting out. And, you know, for me to put out 7,000 volts and I'm charging up a huge battery bank, this thing's going to charge up in no time. Oh, there goes my uh, meter. Uh, all right. Yeah, look at it go. It's just climbing now. So here's the energy transfer. This wrapping two, two, two wraps of the wire around the transfer coil into the full weight bridge rectifier. And now I'm charging capacitors. And I think that light is starting to turn on. Yep, it is. There we are. We're at uh, 1.8. Look at it go. It's just climbing. And if you're going to charge capacitors, you have to have a load on it. Otherwise, the capacitors won't charge. See, we're already up to almost 2 volts already. And this is what you would use to charge up a battery bank that the batteries would be running off an inverter and that would power your utilities and use this thing to charge up those batteries. See now the light's coming on. Look at this, we're almost at two volts already. Those were like what, two minutes? Yep, we're at two volts. LED light is on. We got power folks. We have power. So anyways, that's that's it, you know. I could keep going and going and going. This thing I could go to three volts, so I'm not gonna push it. I might even fry the bulb, the LED, but yeah, you can see it's on. It looks better at nighttime, you can actually see it. But yeah, we got a steady climb here. This should go up to three volts. There's the neon bulb, there's spark gap. Let's see the sparks go. Probably my voice is all crackly because of the uh, spark gap. There's the other one. LEDs fully lit. So yeah, it's uh, it's working. It's doing exactly what I want. Now, if I hook this up to a pulse motor and then charge a big bank and then use this and charge that big power bank up, I could have a pulse motor running forever, pretty much. Because it takes very little power to run this thing. Because I can charge a capacitor bank so fast. Like a battery, a 12 volt car battery, would take 12 to 13 hours to fully charge. Well, if I could charge a capacitor bank and do that in like 30 minutes or less, then this thing could technically be shut off. You run the power through the capacitor bank to run the inverter, and then when it gets low, put it on a timer circuit, flips back on, charges it up again, 
it keeps going. And uh, yeah, so look at that. It's just continuing. So I've topped out at about 2.1. Uh, let's crank it up a little higher. Yeah, let's go eight. See if it's going to go any higher. Yeah, it's not dry. Uh, it's going up a bit. But I think you get the idea. I, I charged uh, almost two and you know, one and a half volts in like less than a couple, uh, about a couple minutes. So that's not bad. I'm on the right track. Like this is not like a, a number one, uh, you know, setup here. Um, you know, this is just a rough draft. But I seem to be on the right track. I'm, okay, I'm going to shut it off. And as you can see, now the power bank or the capacitor bank's going to start going down. Yeah. I might have blew that light. <laughs> well, well, it could have been it. Yeah, I might have blown the light. You know why? Because I cranked it up to 8,000 volts. And uh, I think I got a bit of a surge in there. And I might have blown the light. Yep, I think I blew it. <laughs> well, that happens. Sometimes you're going you're gonna to wreck stuff. Uh, burn lights out. Uh, my other voltmeter, the other day I fried that sucker to like high heaven. So, yeah, you know, little things are going to happen, you know. This one here is a 400 amp uh, uh, full weight bridge rectifier. When you're dealing with these voltage, I would get a bridge rectifier that could handle a lot of amperage. Then that way, if you get flashes, it's not going to burn out your, your bridge rectifier. So, yeah, uh, this is it. Um, yeah, it's come together. I'm actually charging things now, which is really cool. It's a small capacitor bank, but at least I know what I'm doing is actually working. It's functioning right. So, yeah, we'll leave it there. We're almost at a 20 minute, eh, 17 minutes there. I think that's a good enough video for today. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, comments below. Don't forget bottom right hand corner. Um, uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also share it, please. Share these videos. We'll get more traffic. We've got a lot of people coming together. This, uh, we're manifesting this information and people are being able to build some great stuff and I'm glad I'm a part of it and uh, I hope you guys jump on board too and start making stuff as well. Uh, anyways, uh, that's it for now. Uh, also, I have the donate button. If you like what I'm doing, if you feel it's worth something, donate me a buck or two. That'd be awesome. And uh, we'll see everybody very soon.